Okay, we're back and we're doing some rotations here. And in particular, we're looking at rolling without slipping. Uh, but then it goes up a frictionless hill or incline. Um, what I've done here is just a quick reminder of what rolling without slipping means. Hopefully we're getting comfortable with, um, with this concept and, and what it implies. Uh, basically, we can connect the linear motion with the rotational motion. We've got both motions at the same time for a rolling object. So we can connect linear and rotational displacements, um, velocities, as well as accelerations here. Uh, that takes out an extra unknown from the problem and makes life a little bit easier for us. So that's always a good thing. There's also no heat loss if there's no slipping. There's no kinetic friction. Rather, it's um, more of a, a static friction, or what we call rolling fr friction. Um, but no heat being produced. That's a good thing for energy. So here's here's the new problem. Um, what we're used to, yeah, one version of this would be something rolling along. It has some inertia value. I don't really care what the shape is. And it gets to the, the incline and it, it's going to roll up the hill. Now in real life, it rolls without slipping up hills, typically. And so when it gets to its highest point, where it stops the linear motion, it also stops the rotational motion. Okay, when when there's when there's friction on the hill and there's rolling without friction or rolling without slipping, um, those two motions, the two velocities, are coupled together. And so when it stops moving forward, it stops spinning as well, and then it rolls back down the hill. That's what we're used to. And we, we run into things like, uh, if, if we need to find out how high it goes on the hill, we can just use energy. We can say at the bottom of the hill, you have a certain amount of translational kinetic energy, and you have a certain amount of rotational kinetic energy. And by the time you get up to the top of the hill, at your highest point, everything stops moving, both linear and rotational. And so that all goes into potential energy. If there's no slipping, then there's no heat, there's no work done by friction, so life is good, and that's all we have to do. Okay, but let's see what happens um, if suddenly you write this down, where there's no friction just on the hill part. So it's still moving forward, it's still rolling at the bottom of the hill. And we want to ask the question, do you go higher? or lower or the same height uh, by the time you stop, okay? When there's a frictionless incline. Well, let's just stay with energy. The total energy is going to be the same. You still have exactly the same amount of, of both kinetic energies at the bottom of the hill. So that's not in question. What's weird about this situation, and we, the only thing that really changes, in fact, let me change colors here, is if there's no friction on the hill, then there's nothing that produces torque. Okay, if there's no torque, what that implies, what torque does to objects is it changes their rotational motion. Okay, in other words, it causes a, a angular acceleration. Well, in this case, if there's no friction on the hill, then there's no torque, and there's no uh, angular acceleration, which means there's no change in your angular velocity. So this would be really weird. Um, by the time you get to the highest point, that is, when, when your linear speed is zero, uh, without torque, there's nothing to affect the spin of, of the object, okay, the, the roll part of it. So what happens is <laughs> it, it'll get to whatever its highest point is. And so even though the, the linear velocity becomes zero, okay, there, there's still gravity pulling down. There's still a net force on the object, which causes your linear motion to change. But the weird part of this is without a torque, it would stop moving up the hill, but it would still be spinning exactly as fast as it was spinning at the bottom of the hill. Okay, so in terms of energy, there's one term 
we have to add on to the final state right here. Okay, and that's the rotational kinetic energy. Now that's exactly the same, since there's no change in the rotation, that's the same as what you had at the bottom of the hill. Okay, so in, in other words, um, you actually, you're not going to go as high on the hill. Um, you've taken away that, that extra energy of the rotation, it's still there. So you don't have that to go into the, the potential energy. And so, it doesn't go as high as if, if, if there were friction on the hill, so that it would roll without slipping. Okay, now what's also kind of weird about this is that it gets to its highest point, where the linear motion stops, that's just you know, momentarily, and then it's going to start to come back because, well, pulling down on it, you have a component of gravity, mg sine theta. Okay, so that's going to make it move down the hill with linear velocity and linear acceleration, but without torque, again, there's nothing to change the spin. It's going to keep spinning clockwise even though it's moving down the hill, going down to the left. What we're used to seeing, if it's coming down the hill, if, if the linear velocity is going down, then we'd expect the rotational motion to be counterclockwise. Well, that's not going to happen here. It, it's going to look, it's going to keep spinning clockwise the way it was at the bottom of the hill initially. <laughs> so it, it looked really freaky. Um, I wish I could do this in class. I, I, I haven't figured out, I'm not smart enough to figure out a way of doing this yet. Because uh, it, would, it would look really weird compared to what we're used to seeing. Um, but I hope this helps. It, it's, it's one of those weird little twists that you have, no pun intended, on rotational motion. And you have to be careful in problems when they, you know, if they state there's rolling without slipping versus if, you know, there's friction or no friction. Is that going to make a torque or not? Is that going to affect the spin of the, the object? Okay, so I hope this helps. Um, and until next time, we'll see you later.